Hi everyone, so now we're going into another deep dive. This time we're looking at Savika. Now Savika is a very interesting character, and I think for, to a certain extent, extent uh, Savika and Vi have certain personality uh, parallels. Well, it's in all likelihood if circumstances had changed and Vi wasn't actually under the wing of Vander, we might actually see a Vi in a very similar position to the position that Savika holds. And it's kind of interesting when you think about this. So, Savika is a very interesting character in that she's more than just number two or the hired muscle, you know. You know, they're not, not just like, Silco is the big bad here, but Savika is plenty, even of herself. And since Jinx is like so overwhelming as far as personality and character development, you kind of forget about Savika a little bit. But there's there's a different facets to her that's very interesting. So of course, when we first see her, she's extremely unhappy uh, with the fact that Vander is kind of smoothing things over, even though the enforcers are are pe treating people like crap. So you know, from Savika's point of view, Vander is a very weak leader, and she doesn't want to follow this guy. So she takes her goons and walks away. And so we think, okay, that's the end of it. I mean. This is kind of the scene to basically establish that there are two sides, at least in the lanes. You know, there's the side that supports Vander, and then there's the side that doesn't really like the way uh, Vander is ha handling the situation, which would, it would be very normal when you consider that. Vander, of course, doesn't want to repeat of the incident that happened on the bridge in episode one, but there are other people who've probably had enough of the abuses of the enforcers and maybe don't have as strong a memory of what happened there. So there's that. Now, we see Savika with Silco in episode three, and you can kind of see the kind of con decision that comes out of her as Vander is being drug away. Now, in this particular point, you may, may think, okay, so she's, she's in, in league with Silco, okay. So what? Now, what's interesting here is what we see here. So after all the thugs are pretty much trying to go after Vi, and Vi has somehow managed to uh, beat all of them with the special gloves that she has, Silco waves Savika back. Now this is kind of interesting, because you would think that at least Silco would let all of his underlings just take a whack at Vi because you know that would make sense but you know he already had a card up his sleeve and he's going to use that ace and that was the mutant and do it so he did not want Savika to risk getting injured I guess that's what the deal is Silka didn't want that to happen now at this point you're wondering so where is Savika in the hierarchy at this point. You would think, at least you're getting a feeling either Silco is being protective of the female goon squad here, or Vika is a little bit higher in the organization than initially appeared. And what's even more interesting here is this. So we see Savika basically risk her life for Silco during the explosion and what ends up happening is she loses an arm or this so when you think about that is like this is talking about dedication to the cause so we know that from this scene alone that savika is 100 percent on board with silco with respect to creating an independent nation making the undercity separate from the overall uh, city of Peltover. You know, top side and down side, or like oil and water, so to speak, as they said in episode 8. That is kind of the thing I get from this particular scene by itself. I mean, if you were just a normal goon, you wouldn't do that. I mean, sure, you don't want your boss killed, but would you put your life on the line for that? I don't think so. So she's got a lot of commitment here. Now, what we see later, starting from episode four, is pretty much Savika is the one who handles the day-to-day -day operations of 
the whole enterprise, so to speak. She's, of course, here when there was a sh large shipment of Shimmer, making sure that everything was fine. And unfortunately, stuff happens that she isn't able to actually handle it, and Silco gets mad at her for that. And then, of course, we see the whole conflict between Vi and Svika, the first time they fight. Which is, of course, many people enjoyed. And here, it's kind of interesting, in that while uh, Savika has a shimmer-powered arm, Vi, without even having that, was pretty good at fighting and was able not only to hold her own, but almost practically beat uh, Savika in this particular case. So, you know, as tough and as brawny as Savika is, I think she works more out of intimidation than anything else. Obviously not as good as a fighter. Which would, if you think about it, it's like if Vi was uh, was not under the wing of Vander and fell under the influence of Silco, it's like that would have been a very nasty combination <laughs> when you think about it. And what's also, of course, interesting here is Savika is mentally tough. So when Jinx basically threatens her other arm with a knife, it's like as far as Savika's concerned is like, whatever. She doesn't even care. She wouldn't probably doesn't care if she lost another arm. She could always make another robotic arm uh, to replace it. And she's just playing a little bit of a head game here in this particular scene. Not only that, but showing how she does not like the fact that Jinx is getting in the way of the cause. So you basically, here's an, a second point here. In that first, when she sacrificed her first arm for the cause, so to speak, didn't want Silco to get killed in the explosion because Silco was the brains behind the operation. He knows how to do stuff to make sure that things get closer and closer to having a separation between top side and down side. And that is what Vika wants. Pretty, pretty clear here. And given that, given the fact that even though she does not like Jinx, and she doesn't like the sheriff too much, and for that matter, she wants Silco to, of course, be calm enough to move things forward. So, of course, when Silco was kind of upset, the fact that Jinx is not returning, Savika takes the opportunity to share a personal story about even though, you know, fathers and daughters get upset, daughters come back in their own time. And that was enough for Silco to at least calm down and then attend the council and, and deal with it in his own particular way, which was, of course, effective as usual. So it's kind of, you see a slightly soft side of Savika in this particular case. Now, what's also very interesting is in this scene right here, is you actually see Savika working on her arm. So she's smart enough to know how to fix it, so to speak. At least mechanically inclined enough to not only repair, but to a certain extent, upgrade her mechanical arm. So it's not like she had to farm that out to, you know, one of the other uh, mad scientists looming around in the Undercity, she can do it herself. So that tells you that while she may not be a great fighter, she's at least intimidating, mentally tough, and smart enough uh, to at least do her own mechanical work, which is kind of a nice, interesting touch there. You, you kind of see her as sort of in between Vi and Jinx in the, in, in the talent department. In, in a strange and interesting way. And then you see here where everything was pretty much set up so that you would think that maybe, just maybe, Savika would actually betray Silco in favor of the other guy. Now, when you think, you think about this, it's like, well, it is possible. Why is it possible? Uh, because if you look at the initial scene way back in the beginning, 
Zavika was upset with the way that Vander was handling the whole situation in the lanes. And true, while Savika did kind of say give up her arm for the cause, Savika uh, was complaining about how Sofa was dealing with the situation with Jinx as how and how the sheriff may have flipped and maybe he hasn't served his purposes. But of course then you see Savika complaining the fact that Jinx killed the sheriff, which is exactly what happened. So you can see that as far as moving the cause forward, it, it seems that Silco is not doing his job. But then you think, okay, what's the alternative here? The alternative is not really great. The alternative is a guy who, true, is not happy with the way Silco is managing things. But what is his vision of the future? It ain't there. And, it's, and if you look at that, and if you know that, then it becomes really clear that Savika would never uh, betray Silco as long as Silco is the guy with the vision. If someone else comes up with a similar vision uh, to Silco and he doesn't have the extra baggage of Jinx or any of the other stuff that goes on, then sure, uh, she might uh, change sides, but that did not happen. So, of course, uh, Silco doesn't get assassinated and the other guy gets dead, which is the way things go. Now, we do, of course, get the final battle between Vi and Savika. And while Savika is powered up, quite, quite powered up, I love the whole knife thing. Of course, as a practicality, there's a separate discussion altogether. But you see that here, it leaves the question of exactly how tough is, is Savika because, of course, she gets punched in the stomach with the gauntlet that Vi has and then ends up here. So when you look at that, it's like, there is no way she could have survived that, but she does. <laughs> so that kind of leaves you with, okay, so Silco is dead. Number two, being Savika, is still alive, so... You do have someone who's committed to the cause, committed to uh, the independent nation of Zahn in the Vika, who is still left. And of course, the one person who sort of plotted to get rid of Silco was also dead. You know, we do have one person, Remy, who was not happy with Silco. But again, Silco is dead now, so who is she going to pledge her allegiance to? Who are the other Kim Barons going to pledge their allegiance to? So that is going to be a tricky thing. And the question is, does Vika have the intelligence and the capacity to keep them reined in? Keep these guys as one cohesive enterprise, so to speak, uh, to make sure that the Undercity doesn't fall into chaos. Now, when we looked at the last scene of Arcane, again, it's going to be a serious question about how both sides <laughs> operate after uh, that really surprising incident. So, again, there's a lot to actually think about here. Zavika, while well, she has shown up until this point really good as far as the muscle, at least intelligent enough to fix her arm, and pretty much knows the operation back and forth, is she good enough to lead in Silco's footsteps? That is a question that remains to be seen, and I look forward to seeing stuff like that in the next season. So, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.